X-rated hardcore monster for the terminally unhinged. It's got such a wide range of intoxicating noises. When you change up, it snorts like a hippo. And then when you put your foot down, it bellows. And then when you take it off again, Honestly, have you ever heard a soundtrack like that? That is the sound of the 60s, right there. And if you push this little button here, you engage the sports exhaust system, which makes it even louder. It's not all bark and no bite, either. The three-litre V6 engine is supercharged and delivers 375 fire-spitting horsepowers. Does 0 to 60 in 4.8 seconds. Top speed, 171. And this isn't even the fast version. If you want, Jag will sell you a 488 horsepower V8. I wouldn't bother, though, because at no point while I've been driving this have I thought, yeah, but I wish it was a bit more exciting. Now, you would imagine that a car this loud and this brutal would be as luxurious as a Methodist's coal house. But no. The roof can be raised or lowered even when you're going 30 miles an hour. The switches are bronzed. The seats are electric. And you can choose what shade of mood lighting you'd like. The interior then is nicely thought out, but it is nothing compared to the exterior. I think this is one of the best looking cars ever made. So, it's beautiful and mad and thrilling and loud. And there's more. A lot of cars these days feel like laptops, but this doesn't. Yes, you can go into the computer and alter the characteristics of the gearbox and the engine and the steering and the suspension, but that said, there's no double-clutch gearbox. It's just a smooth eight-speed auto. There's no six-way traction control. There's no complicated folding metal roof. It's much simpler than that. Engine at the front, drive to the rear, and a big, smiling piece of meat in the middle. The chassis is epic, and so are the brakes, and so's the steering. And you've got tons of locks, so if you do get it out of shape, it's easy to get it back again. In many ways, it, it puts me in mind of a BMW M3, and that is, that is high praise. Except it's not a BMW, it's a Jag. And I wish I could end it there, but unfortunately, there are one or two issues that need mentioning. Just done my weekly shop. I bought some jam, some milk, some sugar, and some butter. Sadly, I wasn't able to buy any more than that because if you buy your Jag with a spare wheel, this is what the boot looks like. How could they have a meeting and decide that that was acceptable? It's just madness. And there's another problem, the price. 
I was expecting the V6 version to cost around £50,000, but actually, it's almost 68000 and the V8 is an eye-watering 80000 But the biggest problem, by a country mile, is the ride. This road appears to be completely smooth, but it feels like I'm driving... No, not driving, it feels like I'm roller skating over a piece of corrugated iron. It's just... And it's even worse when you're going slowly in a town. That's just unbearably harsh. And there's no need for it. When you've got a chassis this good, you don't need hard suspension. What were they thinking of? Happily, however, the ride does get better the faster you go. Which means there is a way round the problem. Don't drive slowly. Drive fast. And let's be honest, in a car that looks this good and sounds this fantastic and goes this well, that's no hardship. That is no hardship at all. 